um, hello everyone i am ayush patel from programming club of iit madras and i will be discussing the editorial for code forces round 868 div 2 let's start with the first problem uh, it says that we have to construct an array a which has only numbers 1 and minus 1 such that the number of pairs whose product is minus 1 is equal to k so first of all uh, for problem a uh, uh since the since we have only ones and minus ones in the array to get a product of one we'll have one times one or minus one times minus one so say there are alpha ones in the array a and beta minus ones in the array a then the number of pairs of ones plus the number of pairs of minus ones will be equal to k that is alpha c2 which is the number of pairs of ones plus beta c2 which is the number of pairs of minus ones will be equal to k also alpha which is the number of ones plus beta which is the number of minus ones will be equal to n which is the size of the array that is uh, we are given we, so we have two equations and we have to solve for alpha and beta uh, seeing the constraints it is given that p is less than equal to 100 and n is less than equal to 100 so that means we could iterate through every possible value of alpha and beta and check if this condition holds true that is So alpha and beta they'll take one zero to n, one or n minus one or uh, two or n minus two and so on till n and zero. We'll check if for any of these cases, if this holds true, then I'll print alpha time I'll print our array A which is alpha times ones and beta times minus ones. If not, we'll just print no. One point to notice that this. this relation is symmetric so we just need to check for alpha from 0 to uh, say uh, c, uh, 0 to say uh, seal of n by 2 or like uh, but that is not necessary even if you run uh, run uh, run the iteration from alpha to uh, from uh, of alpha from 0 to n it will give us the answer because the constraints are so small let us see the code uh, here i have defined a nc2 function which returns n times n minus 1 over 2 and after taking input n and k i'll just iterate through all the values from 0 to n and check if n if ic2 plus n minus ic2 gives us k if yes then i'll just print i times 1 and n minus i times minus 1 if not i'll just print no in the end now coming to the second problem problem number b sort with steps it is given that initially we have a permutation p and we have to sort this permutation it is given that for sorting we could swap elements from these uh, permutation such that the index the difference in index of those two elements is equal to k it is also given that if it is impossible to sort within this using this uh, method so initially we could have one prelim preliminary exchange that is swap any two numbers we pick any two numbers and swap them and then run this uh, method again that is pick any that is pick uh, those indexes who differ by k and swap them even if we are not now even so by using one preliminary exchange if we are not able to sort the array then we'll have to print that corresponding case like it is given that print zero if we are if we have if we could sort the permutation using with any with using uh, like without uh, using any preliminary exchange if we use one preliminary exchange we just print one so uh, if if we can't uh, sort it by using uh, at most one preliminary exchange we'll print minus one uh, so we'll see this case uh, we'll we'll discuss this problem b uh, using a uh, say i'll illustrate an example say we have 6 4 1 5 3 and we have given they have given k equals to 2 suppose indexes are 0 1 2 3 4 5 
that means so this k equal to 2 means the i minus j which is the index of the swapping elements is 2 that is we could swap 0 and 2 we could swap 2 and 4 we could swap uh, I mean we could swap 1 and 3 and we could swap 3 and 5 um, interesting point to note is that say we have an uh, we have array a and these elements which are separated by k say this these two are separated by k and these two are also separated by k say these are a b c then not just only we can uh, swap a and b and b and c we could also swap a and c keeping b constant that is it will finally become something like c b and a how I'll show you right now. So initially, we had A, B, and C. First of all, we swap A and B. We get B, A, and C. Then again, I swap A and C. I get uh, B, C, and A. Again, I swap C and B. I get C, B, and A, which which means that keeping B in the middle, you could swap C and A. Similarly, if it was A, B, C, D, we could just swap d and a using such uh, such swaps using such swaps consecutive swaps we could get something like this that means that for every uh, element whose index differ by k we could swap them all together that is say if we have a array like this initially we are given like this so uh, this could be swapped say suppose with uh, say let let us take the case of k equal to 3 this will be swapped with this and again this with this um, for this element this could be swapped with this and this could further be swapped with this um, um, take one more case this will be swapped with this so we could kind of group these two numbers because in the final array a uh, in the sorry in the final array uh, in the final permutation this number uh, so these these positions correspond to these positions say, uh, say suppose so these number after arranging them will take these corresponding positions okay so it means that if we divide our original given array into several sets say this belongs to set number 0 this belongs to set number 1 this belongs to set number 2 again this belongs to set number 0 this belongs to set 1 this 2 to this one to 0 and this one to again 1 these are the set numbers so in like we have several sets uh, also the set 0 should have numbers 1 2 and 3 and this is 4 which is actually this will be 1 1 plus k so set number 0 will have 1 1 plus k 1 plus 2k and so on uh, the set number 1 will have 2 2 plus k 2 plus 2k and so on set number similarly set number 2 will start from 3 3 plus k 3 plus 2k and so on obviously this this was the case when k was 2 so there won't be any set 2 here but if k was 3 or more than 3 we get set 0 set 1 set 2 and so on um, so the indexing of set if the set is in uh, if the set index is 0 it will start with 1 if the set index is 1 it will start with 2 if it is 2 it will start with 3 and the and it will be incremented and the elements will be incremented by k so uh, let us see the code for this part i'll explain the part where we have one preliminary exchange first of all i have defined a data structure data it is a map which which maps every which maps some integer to some set and we take an input we, we take an input array a array a double r and we, i percentage k gives us the set index right from here it was clear that this is 0 this is 1 this is set 2 again this is 0 1 2 that means the set index are uh, i mean uh, the i the the position the element at position i the, the sorry uh, yeah the element at position i will have the will go inside the set with number 
uh, with, with the with set with in uh, set with uh, reference number i per, i modular k this is what i did here data i modular k dot insert a double r i and now i will check if that set has the numbers which we required for it to be a sorted array that is uh, we check if set 0 has these numbers 1 1 plus k 1 plus 2 k and so on if set 1 has 2 2 plus k 2 plus 2 k and so on that is what we check here cnt is the number of uh, cases where that required number is not present in the set so pr dot uh, uh, this pr is a pair of uh, integer and set so pr dot first will give you the set index and we'll iterate from num equals to the starting the one one plus the uh, set index that is a plus one it will go till num is less than equal to zero and it will it will be incre incremented by k so num will take all these values these values will be taken by num and will will be checking if the set pr dot second pr dot second will be the set if this set contains num then it's fine if it doesn't if it doesn't contain then i'll increment my my counter by one so if my counter is zero that means all those numbers that we required it to be a sorted array are there in that set that we have made it here so i'll print zero zero means that without any uh, uh without any uh what was that uh without any preliminary exchange we could uh we could get uh, a sorted array using the swap by swapping the elements whose index differ by k. Now coming to the case of once uh, one preliminary exchange, say our set set uh, zero is something like this, and this is our set one and so on. Say a number x doesn't belong to this set, and the corresponding number which belong to set this set was y and which is present in this set that means whenever our loop runs it will count the number of uh, times where that number doesn't belong to that set so it will increase the counter by one for this and it will increase the counter by one for this so uh, and we if we perform one preliminary exchange between these two elements we'll uh, we'll get uh, our sorted array after swapping using the given method for this problem so if our count is equal to 2 then it will correspond to the case of one preliminary exchange this is what i did here if count equals to 2 then c out 1 which represents one preliminary exchange if count is neither 2 nor 0 then i'll just print minus 1 that is we can't sort the array by having at most one preliminary exchange we'll go to the problem number c uh, C just defines initially it just defines what is a prime number what is a composite number it defines a new number strongly composite number um, strongly composite number uh, so we have uh, problem C say uh, suppose we take 12 what are the devices of 12 the devices of 12 are 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 4 6 and 12 are composite devices while 2 and 3 are prime devices what is what does the statement says that strong uh, composite number is a number which has a uh, number of prime devices number of prime devices less than or equal to number of composite devices so this is the problem statement it says that uh, the number of prime devices is less than or equal to the number of composite devices then it will uh, then it will be a strongly composite number so 12 is a strongly composite number because it has two prime devices and three composite devices say take the example of 15 it has 1 3 5 and 15 as its devices where 15 uh, where 3 and 5 are prime devices and 15 is a composite divisor 
this means that the number of prime devices are more than the number of composite devices so this is not a strong composite number uh, we'll take the general case i'll say suppose a number which is a prime number itself so it has devices 1 and prime p so this p will be a prime divisor so the number of prime devices are more than the number of composite devices here we don't have any composite devices so it is not a strong component it is not a strong uh, it is not a uh, strong composite number uh, say suppose we take the case of uh, something like p1 p2 where p1 and p2 are prime its devices are p1 p1 p2 and p1 p2 uh, P1, P2 is a, uh, is a composite number. P1 and P2 are prime numbers. So the number of prime devices are still greater than the number of composite devices. So this is also not a prime, prime not a uh, strong uh, uh, composite number. Say we have the case of P1, P2, P3. Its devices are one, P1, P comma P2 comma P3 comma P1, P2. Uh, P2, P3, P1, P3, and uh, P1, P2, P3. So the prime devices are one, uh, sorry, P1, P2, and P3, and the composite devices are P1, P2, P2, P3, P1, P3, P1, P2, P3. Here, the number of prime devices, which is three, is less than less, it's less than the number of composite devices, which is four. So this number is a strong uh, composite number. Let us take a case where prime numbers repeat in the prime factorization. Say we have something like p square. Its prime factor, its uh, uh, its factors, its uh, devices will be one p and p square. So p square will be a composite divisor, whereas p will be a prime divisor. Number of prime devices is equal to the number of composite devices. That's why it is also a uh, it is also a strong composite number. And if you take any other case, say if you multiply any number to any prime number to these two, it will definitely be a strong uh, composite number. You can check that by taking other examples also. Uh, coming to the problem statement, it says that using these, using the uh, keeping, uh, I mean, we are given n integers a1 to till a n, and we we uh, we have to construct a array b such that all the elements of b are integers greater than 1 and they are strongly composite also the product of all the ais will be equal to the product of all the bk's or the bi's so uh, uh, given also we have to maximize the size of array b okay so give here the product of all the ai elements will be constant right it will be constant for a given test case this means that to increase the size of array b we'll have to distribute the prime numbers though that are involved in these products we'll use the minimum we'll use the minimum number of prime numbers to construct each element of b so since elements of b have to be strong composite number we could have either p square or this kind of uh, thing p1 p2 p3 so say uh, take an example of uh, say the product of all the numbers of array a was 2 raised to the power 7 3 raised to the power 4 and 5 raised to the power 3 11 raised to the power 1 maybe so how we'll go on is see we have to uh, distribute these uh, prime numbers 2 3 5 and 1s uh, and 11s uh, in 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 the among the num among uh, the b el uh, among the elements of b so to maximize the array we first of all try to minimize the uh, we'll try to minimize the number of primes we use for each element in bi in in b so uh, we'll we'll try to have maximum of these cases p square and if we can't fit any p square if we have remaining primes which are which are uh, whose occurrences is who, whose uh, if we have remaining primes uh, whose uh, power is less than 2 which is whose power is 1 then we'll include it in the case where it has three primes in, in inside a number so for this case we'll have 2 square comma 2 square comma 2 square 
and we'll have a two left here because this power is seven. For three raised to power four, we'll have three square and three square. And for five cube, I'll have a five square here and five will be left here. For eleven, I can't have any pair of I can't have any p square term, so I'll just use it here. So from here, we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and the product of these numbers two, five, and eleven, seven. So for this case, I'll have seven uh, integers in the array B. Say we have one more factor here, say thirteen raised to the power one. Obviously, I can't include, I can't make this uh, 13 alone a strong composite number. It is not a, a strong composite number. So I'll just have to to accommodate to make the product equal to m. I'll just use it inside. I'll just multiply 13 to any one of the numbers here that we have used. It will give us a strong composite number only. It is so because if we multiply any number to a strong composite number, it will still be a strong composite number. You can see this by uh, having some examples also. This is what we did here. Um, also, so 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 coming to the implementation part. Uh, I have used a very uh, um, very famous or very uh, frequently used algorithm here, which is sieve. From by using sieve, we could uh, check if the number is prime or not. I won't be discussing sieve here right now because it is a very well-known algorithm. And uh, if you are not aware of sieve, you can search it on internet. I'll come to the main part. Uh, I took the input n and. I decrease n every time I take an input x. Now this part deals with the prime factorization of x. That is, I'll go from i equals to two to i star i is less than equal to x. That is, i is less than equal to root x. If i is a prime number and if i divides x, I'll keep dividing x by i until it is not divisible by i, and I'll increase the counter that i has occurred. How I'll increase this counter so. P fac is a map which contains how many times a prime has occurred. So P fac will be increased by i for every time uh, x will be divisible by i. And in the end, if uh, for this this checks for all the prime divisors which are which belong to two and root x, like which which belong between two and root x. If x is not equal to one after dividing all the uh, prime uh, factors from x. Uh, like after after removing all the prime occurrences uh, uh, from two to root x, even if uh, so, uh, even if it is one, uh, if it is not one right now, that means x itself is a prime number that occurred between root x and x, and x will be a prime number. We are sure of that because, uh, I mean, this is a, I mean. Uh, since x is greater than root x, if you, if 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 it was a product of some other primes, if if it was was not itself a prime, that uh, or we can say if it was a product of other primes, it will be greater than the 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 then then that product will be greater than x itself because if we multiply, uh, I mean I'll show it here. Uh, uh, I have used up all the primes from two to root x. Less than equal to root x. Now say uh, if some prime number is uh, remaining here, uh, if uh, then uh, like uh, sorry. After removing all the primes from in this range, if we are re remained, if we have remaining x, if x is remaining here, then it is bound to be a prime number which belongs from root x to the original x we had. Uh, It is so because if we multiply, if we have any other prime, uh, if we if this is a product of any prime, it would lead it if we if it was a product of to any two primes or three primes maybe, then it would uh, make our original if, if it will give our uh, x which would be greater than our original x. Okay, so coming back to the implementation part, so till at this point. We have all the occurrences of primes in our p fact, and we have the number of times how many we have the number of times that how many times that particular prime occurs. Now I have initialized C N T and answer. 
so for every pair of uh, for every uh, prime in pfac prs dot second will give you the uh, number of occurrences so we'll have i have a integer division of uh, it uh, integer division of the of, the, of that count divided by 2 that is it will take how many p square terms you could have in array b and the remaining part will be will be a stray prime which will use up later for multi for having a strongly component for having a strong composite number which would be of the form p1 p2 p3 so in the end i'll increment my answer by count by 3 here also count by 3 is a integer division it is because that if count is not divisible by 3 i'll accommodate that stray number here we had the 13 that prime we could accommodate it anywhere else so that it it still remains strong uh, composite number and in the end i just print the final answer ans and that's how i solved this problem let me see uh, overall i would say this contest was more of uh, solving the problems fast because all the problems a b and c were easy but uh, to get a good rank we needed to solve it faster thank you for watching this editorial